Hello, and welcome back to Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this module on data, we're looking at more than JavaScript. We're looking into PHP, MySQL, so that we can save data from uh, JavaScript or from the, the HTML world, from the canvas or from the DOM. And that's another thing. We're not only looking at the canvas now, although this, this right now is the canvas. You can kind of tell because of the excitement that's going on here. We've got animation coming in. Watch this. And all sorts of things that we can do. It's all big and bright. So this is a canvas, but we're also going to be looking at HTML. As a matter of fact, we can look at that now. Here's the HTML version of this form. It did pretty good, huh? <laughs> I mean, this doesn't look like your traditional HTML form uh, because it actually wasn't created in HTML. Well, it was. It was created here on the canvas first where this was really easy. We're free form. We put this here. We put that there. It's colorful, bright, and animated. So when we came back into, <laughs> into HTML and put a traditional HTML, you should have seen it. It was just this stuff up in the corner of one field after another, you know, it was like, oh, oh gosh. And so I thought I would see what I could do with styling to, to bring this into something a bit more visual. So how do you like it? Not, not bad, huh? And we can type in a name there, do, do, and we can pick a, or pick a, uh, go, go, go. Let's pick a color here. I tried to get four colors, but it doesn't show, show four colors in Firefox, only in Chrome, probably not Safari either. So um, how about a lighter yellow? <laughs> Woo, <laughs> lighter yellow. Yeah. And then we can submit. So there we go. Doo doo, <laughs> who picked this lighter color right here, has a count of 43. So, uh, and it's saying thank you. So we've got um, information that's coming from an HTML form. It's being sent to a database. And then we're getting the rest of the information from the database and showing it here. Now, what we've decided to do is we're only, we're showing the top 10 per color. So here's whoever's picked this color. And this is only do do at the moment. <laughs> Let's go back and try it again. Uh, well, <laughs> we have to pick the same color. I'll choose a different number though. There, I got slightly higher this time. Look, my count is going up. And so now we have doo doo coming in here. You can, uh, since this is being passed through via the form.php in a get manner, you see how all this stuff is up on the command line? Sorry if that's really small. I really wish we could increase the size of that, but it doesn't seem to let us. Anyway, if we, uh, if we want, we could put some other name in here, like uh, Roger and Roger Rowe, actually. So I hit Enter. And because that's on the command line like that, it actually entered Roger O tying doo doo at 40, at 58. Ah, can you believe it? Wow, what a close match this is on who can count the highest. <laughs> Roger O can count to 58. Ooh, go Roger O. Um, so anyway, this can be handy for debugging. If you, if you want, you see the data that you're getting here, you can make changes to it, hit submit, and it changes. If this were via post, then you wouldn't be able to do that. So most forms have send their data via post so that you can change the change data like this. <laughs> like, oh, maybe Roger O decides he wants 580. <laughs> yeah, go Roger O. That's really counting high. So yeah, we don't usually send our form information as as get, all right? Those are two famous ones, get and post, uppercase letters, usually. All right, so all this data, by the way, is going into here, into the database. And what we'll do is we'll show you, we'll do another video on how to set up the database. We'll also do a video on the PHP that handles this for us. You see, it's got, it's got to insert the data, and then it's got to get the data out from the database and show it to you. So that's what the PHP is doing here in this PHP page, and we'll take a video to look through that as well. Right now, in this video, we're going to take a look through, oops, back here, the, <laughs> the, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I really want a different color. I don't like any of these colors. <laughs> I'll go back to an orange. Okay, it's the wrong orange. It's more like a peachy orange, but whatever. Um, we're going to take a look through this HTML page and see how we set it up so that we can send our data across to the server. So let's reduce this down. We'll pop on into some code now. Uh, this is the form.html right here. 
So uh, there we go, HTML, look, woohoo! Now the purpose of these videos right now is not to take you through uh, HTML specifically, but to show you how to handle the data. So here's the stylings to make those stylings happen. And here's some script to, uh, oh, maybe I'll show you, did I show you that? If you don't put in a name, no name and hit uh, enter or submit here, submit, please enter name. So there's some JavaScript that's going to do some form validation there for you and pop up that message. That's what this JavaScript is doing. And also changing the color. I think one of them changes the color and one does the form, but we'll come back to that, shall we? Scrolling on down, here's now the form. Form and the action is sending off to a PHP. So if we were to run this locally at the moment, like locally from here, we would get an error. Do you want to see that error? That looks nice. We're going to open that up in a browser. So here it is running locally, and I have to put in a name still, and I submit. Ooh, oh, this is what PHP looks like if you submit locally. See, there's no PHP locally. That PHP page just shows shows all the PHP kind of like garbly gooked in there. So if you see that, it might mean that you're running your page locally and we have PHP does not run locally. So we would have to, at this point, put in the absolute URL to the server here if we wanted that to work. Or we can upload this page to the server and run it on the server. So that's what we've been doing. So uh, we, which one is, this one right here is on the server. See that? This one is locally. So I'm just going to close that down. All right. Uh, the other thing is we are going to be dealing with Ajax coming up. And Ajax uh, also has security issues. If you try and run Ajax from here, even if you put the, the URL to the server, you'd still run into cores permissions, it's called, and stuff. But, so watch that for later. We'll come back to that. Huh? Let's take a look at our fields. So if we, uh, let's visually look at them first. Here's the name field right here. Here's the count field. Or, uh, it's a number stepper, but we, we call it count. Here's the color picker. And there's the submit button. So let's see how these are laid out in our HTML. They're inside the form. And there's our form via get right there. It's the method get. Here's the name field. Uh, where is the name field? Right here, input. So you're looking for inputs for the most part. Inputs are the names, uh, or are, are, is the name of the tag. Uh, here's the name field. Now, uh, it's a name field because it's got the word name there, not because of that name. This is the name of the parameter. And it's important to use the name parameter for each of these. That's how we collect the data. If you only had the ID, it would be very frustrating. In your PHP, we could not collect the, the data if we only have the ID. IDs you can use here for styling, but you need the name parameter, even though these are the same. It's kind of unfortunate, isn't it? You need the name parameter for each of those. All right, and there they are. Name, count, color, submit. We don't care too much about. Well, actually, I think we need the ID on the submit. We'll, we'll see. So when we submit the form, we're going to test to make sure that they've put in a name. And so we use an event on that submit button. That means we need to have a reference to it. Here's a data list that is putting in, trying to put in four colors. Unfortunately, it doesn't work in Chrome. So uh, remember back in our, our Zim side, we had four colors and I was trying to recreate that here. But Chrome uh, didn't, didn't, or sorry, Chrome did it. Uh, doesn't work in Firefox. What did I say? Yeah, anyway, it doesn't work in Firefox. Safari, it works in Chrome. So come on, browsers. Come on, come on. You can do it. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so <laughs> it's too bad. Anyway, no big deal. Let's go take a look at the, the, the script there. Oh, there's a message. So this is that message. Did I show you that one that pops up a uh, warning? I can't remember. If you have no name, I think I did. Yeah, I get a message there. So let's see how this is all done. We come on up to the, the script. We're capturing the DOM content loaded on the window. We're using the document.getElementById. That, that makes sure that all the tags are loaded. Uh, we 
So don't use a loaded there. Loaded would wait for pictures and other content. If you just want to start working with the tags right away, use DOM content loaded. I know it's really long. And so is document.getElementById. So we're capturing the name field, the color field, <laughs> color field, the submit button, and a message button. Uh, maybe we didn't need. I thought we no, but we don't need all of them because all we're doing is we're going to let the form submit that stuff for us. Uh, we're only these are the only ones that we need up here in our script. We need the submit button to test to see if the name has something in it, and we need the color so that we can set the background color on the document's body. <laughs> that style. Uh, um, by the way, all this stuff adds up. You see all of these things that that were they're in here. The, this HTML world. We uh, we come back here. You see this. This is Zim, where we've got the particle emitters. We have nice animation coming in, like whoosh whoosh whoosh. We've got just beautiful color picker stuff. We've got animation up there. Zim is half the size of the HTML, so the code to do this is half as much as the code. To, to do this and that's what we're saying you know all this stuff is is adding up this is 4000k so select it all here 4523k versus zim sitting at 22k or something or not 22k in 2000 okay whatever whatever that is is it, is it 22k <laughs> which one was this again uh 4000 yeah so not not 22,000 uh 2500 is zim so that's that's nice, nice for the canvas, nice for Zim. It does show that HTML could um, use some honing, honing, like making it a little bit easier <laughs> to do this stuff. And that's what certain libraries on the HTML side, like jQuery, are, are making this stuff shorter. And that's that's the reason why. All right, oops, uh, back here we're taking a look. Oh, right at this JavaScript. Okay, we've got our our fields. And when the color changes, so when the color field changes, we're setting the background color to whatever is in the color field. Great. When we've got a submit button here, when we're adding an event listener, when we click on that submit button, we're collecting an event object right there. And that allows us later to stop the form from submitting. So e.preventDefault is the way that we stop that submit button from clicking through and submitting the form. So why are we doing that though? Well, if the name's value is nothing, so if we've got nothing in the name, then we're going to make sure that we've got our message has some words in it, please enter a name. We now display the message, because if you take a look up here, the message, where is the message, 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 message. Message, message, message. <laughs> Did you see it? It must, must have been in here somewhere. Oh, there it is. Uh, isn't that funny? Um, uh, on, the, on the CSS, I was putting divs, uh, even though we don't need div number sign message, I was doing that because I, I was forgetting what these things were, if they were if they were labels on the, the input fields. So you see here's div colors. What, what is that again versus the uh, color? And so here we've said the input is color. Now I can easily identify my input fields. <laughs> that time it failed because I, I was looking along here for the message and I couldn't see. Anyway, so that said just a div down at the bottom is uh, what message is. And we have displayed none the message. So it's not showing to start. Well, if there's no name in it and we click the submit button, then we show the message. <laughs> Is that an obvious way? I don't know. Message.style.display block. OK, great. Um, super. Uh, we're stopping the click from going through and submitting the form. We're also, we need a way to close our, our little pop-up thing here. And so what we've done is this is all in the function called pop. Oh, no, it isn't. How is this even working? What's pop? Hey, don't know what pop is. Oh, pop is right here. There's our function. Right. So we're making a new function to make sure that we can close, as in display none, that again. This is our new function pop here. It's a little, little pop. And then what we can do is we can document.remove event listener, our mouse down. 
on pop. So basically this thing runs once. Uh, otherwise, every time we didn't put in a name, we would have a new close the pop uh, function. So that's tricky stuff. Um, this is everywhere. Uh, the uh, everywhere in coding with events you you want to make sure it's an event event management or something anyway we're giving you the code for this you're welcome to come in and take a peek through that uh, like i said it's not really uh, specifically what we're looking at but it does show how we stop the information from being passed to the server if we didn't enter a name okay i think that's pretty good so in other words if we did enter a name, the submit just keeps on going through and anything that the user has typed or put in these fields is going to be submitted to the form via get. <laughs> so there we go. And that's uh, that's the sort of the front end of it. So how the data works. When we come back, we're going to take a look at how do we collect it in here. Well, actually, we should take a look first at how to set this thing up so that we, uh, we can collect it. We, we need to look through how to set up our database. And that is what we're going to see when we come back. So I uh, enjoyed that. This has been Learn JavaScript and I guess other things with Creative Coding. I'm Dr. Abstract. We look forward to having you at our next, uh, at our next video. Ciao.